guys, I'm Isaac Ness and welcome to my new series, River Guide, where I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to fish some of the best rivers in the US. So today we're gonna to be looking at the Davidson River. Davidson River is probably one of the most popular streams in the southeast, but it's not without good reason. I mean, this stream has one of the highest densities of trout per mile in this entire area, and add in that it also has the largest section of catch and release only water that I know of in the southeast, and it makes for a really good fishery. There's a lot of really big fish that do come out of the Davidson, but that also means a lot of pressure on this river. Because of all the pressure that this river sees, it can definitely be some really tough fishing. Typically, small midges and light tippets are going to be the go-to for it. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about where the Davidson's actually located. I'll talk about all the different designations and regulations that are on the different stretches of the river out here. And then I'm also gonna talk about the best gear to use out here. And then finally finishing up with just how to fish this river year round to produce success. Starting off, the Davidson is located in Western North Carolina. It's really close to a town called Brevard here, which is about 30 minutes south of Asheville. All right, so what are the different designations you're gonna run into on this river? First and foremost, there's gonna be four different designations that you're gonna run into out here. First one is gonna be private. This is sections that are totally off limits to anglers. Don't even worry about them. You know, there's plenty of public water on this river as well. Next up, you're gonna run into a section that is called hatchery supported. That means that they're stocking in this section. In that section, you can keep fish for part of the year. You can also use bait, whereas the rest of the river you can't, but it can get a little bit crowded with some other people on it. After that stretch, you're gonna run into the catch and release portion of this river. And in the catch and release portion of this river, you can only use artificial flies and lures. You also can't keep anything, which means that there can be some bigger fish in here, but they've seen a lot of flies before so they can be really finicky through this stretch. After that catch and release stretch, there is some wild water designation on some of the headwaters and on some of the tributaries to this. In those waters, you can keep four fish per day of seven inches or larger, but you have to use artificial flies and lures. Showing first where this private section is, the private section starts right behind where the hub is right away on 276 as you turn off there goes all the way down to the confluence with the French Broad. And this is owned by a variety of landowners. Uh, it is not accessible to the public. Probably not going to be a spot that you're gonna be able to fish. There's a really clear designation though where there is a rope across the river just upstream of where the hub is. You can't miss the hub in Davidson River Outfitters. And it goes all the way across and there's a big sign out into the middle of the river that says private, no fishing allowed. Anything upstream of that is all public. So upstream of your private is going to be the hatchery supported section and this section is going to extend about one mile from where the rope is across the river all the way up to the confluence with Avery Creek and this section receives some of the heaviest stocking of any river in North Carolina. They're putting in 1100 rainbows, browns, and brookies each month from March through August for a total of 6,600 new trout being put in this section every year. And once you add in holdover trout to this, there's probably more trout per mile than anywhere else in the state in this section. So the reason so many trout are actually stocked into this section each year is that from April all the way through February, you're allowed to keep seven trout a day of any size in here, which considering that the rest of the river is catch and release, this is the section to go and fish if you want to take home a trout dinner or you want to put some trout in your freezer if you're doing some camping. Keep in mind, this section definitely does get hit a lot harder by the people that are camping around there and people looking to keep fish. So if you're looking for an area with less competition, head on upriver. This section could definitely get overlooked by fly fishermen though. 
especially in the winter when there's less people camping, swimming, and tubing through this section, and it can produce really well in those months. Next up is the catch and release section of this river that extends all the way from Avery Creek, roughly 14 miles upriver to this stream's headwaters. This is the largest portion of river and consists of really long, flat, really tasty looking pools all over the place. Uh, most of the section is running along 276 and there are pull-offs almost every 100 yards on here. So you'll have no problem finding a place to actually go park, take a picnic, get out there and go ahead and actually fish. This section all the way up through the hatchery can definitely receive a lot of pressure, especially the section that is close to the hatchery on this river probably sees the most pressure of anywhere on this stream. Above the hatchery is gonna receive a lot less pressure and can be great fishing as well. This section holds really good populations of fish and you'll often find lots of piggy risers in the spring and in the early summer. And is where most of the really big 20 plus inch fish that this river is known for are gonna live. Be warned though, if you're going to fish the hatchery section, you might need to bring your own rock to actually stand on here. You're definitely going to be fishing stuff like 5 or 6x, and a lot of times you're going to want to be throwing really small midges or matching the hatch pretty closely. So outside of those, there's also wild water on this upstream in Avery Creek and also in Looking Glass Creek that are major tributaries to this river. And in these sections, you can keep four fish with a minimum size of seven inches but the fish here are not super big, so if you are thinking about keeping them, I would definitely recommend going down to the hatchery supported section of this river. You'd definitely be better off putting a few in the freezer from down there. The ones up in the wild waters are just not really big enough. The wild water sections of this river typically fish best in the hotter summer months of this year, and they can be really fun when you're trying to beat the crowds on the main stem of the Davidson. A lot of the fish in there is going to be just dry flies or just dry dropper rigs and you'll do great. The fish are not super picky in there, but it can be a little bit tight in the streams. Casting can be a little more constrained because of how tight the streams are. In terms of gear for actually fishing the Davidson, for the main section all the way up through the catch and release waters until you really get to the headwaters way above the hatchery, or in the wild waters, I would recommend using a 9 foot 5 weight or a 9 foot 4 weight with a 9 or 10 foot leader on it, probably taping da tapering down to something like 5x, uh, at least your lead fly, maybe 6x to your tailing fly after that. And typically, I would recommend going pretty small in terms of dry flies and nymphs on this water. Once you do get up into those headwaters, though, you might want to have a rod that's somewhere more like a 2 or a 3 weight. Uh, even having something that's like a seven and a half foot two weight would be a lot of fun up on this water where you're just throwing shorter leaders, probably something like a five or six foot leader tapered down to four or five X and fishing dry dropper rigs. In terms of time of year to actually get out on the Davidson, definitely the best time is going to be right away in the spring, really from February through May when the water temps are between 45 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. After that, from May through October on this river, once it gets above 60 degrees in the water, the fish are really gonna only be eating really early in the morning and late in the afternoon. And with the warmer temps comes plenty of crowds of people. There's gonna be a lot of people tubing, swimming, skipping rocks, and having picnics who aren't always the most conscientious of anglers. Add in that the fish don't bite very much at these temps and you probably will be a lot better off going to those headwaters. Once you get into October though, and those water temps come back down into the 60s and then into the 50s, the fishing is gonna heat up quite a bit and all those fish are gonna be really active again. Winter on the Davidson is definitely not a time to overlook, however, with plenty of warm summer days here in Western North Carolina. If the temps do get above 40 degrees in the river, the trout will be feeding. This time of year is usually not as many anglers, so it can be a great time to get out and hit some of those spots with some of the bigger fish like the hatchery that aren't gonna have as much pressure. If you guys wanna learn more about how to catch trout in any conditions that you're in and any time of year, you can check out my book that's gonna be dropping this fall. If you wanna see me catching a beautiful, colored up, kiped 24 inch brown trout in this river, I'm gonna have the link right up here on the screen. You can click it and check it out. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this series here. I hope this helps you get out onto the Davidson and have some success out there. 
This is a new series I'm doing, so if there's anything you felt like this was missing and you'd like to see included, please drop a comment below and just let me know. I'd be happy to include it for future videos. Other than that, subscribe so you don't miss any more of these river guides or any more of the awesome fishing videos I'm going to be putting out later this year. And until next time, stay fishy.